4. Next Generation Attack Submarine By the mid-2030s, the US Navy hopes to start acquiring the Next Generation Attack Submarine, a new class of nuclear-powered attack submarine which is also known as SSNX. Since 1998, they've been obtaining the Virginia-class SSN design. The SSNX will be the successor if the US Navy follows through with this procurement. Their projected budget in 2023 for SSNX research and development funding is $237 million. The US Navy uses nuclear-powered cruise missile submarines, assault submarines, and ballistic missile submarines. They're all-purpose with a wide range of duties that they can carry out in peacetime and combat. The X in SSNX means that the boat's exact design has not yet been decided. The Navy claims the SSNX will offer greater speed, increased horizontal payload capacity, higher operational availability, and improved acoustic superiority once completed. It'll be used to confront the rising danger presented by rivalry between both peers and adversaries for underwater domination. Additionally, it'll be able to communicate with a large number of off-hull vehicles, allied troops, and sensors. It will enhance multi-mission capabilities, maintain a fighting presence in restricted seas, and carry out full-blown underwater warfare. The original Virginia-class design, and potentially even the original Seawolf SSN-21 design, will likely be surpassed by the SSNX. The designs of US Navy submarines with similar cargoes have often increased in displacement from one generation to the next, thanks to technical advancements throughout time. According to the Navy's budget documents, SSNX should have strong networking capabilities, including the capacity to exchange data with a number of different platforms, some of which could be unmanned undersea and surface ships. The service has already made great strides in networking and sensor fusion technologies, with the goal of eventually being able to connect all of its ships, submarines, planes, and other assets. The cost of the Navy actually building a fleet of SSNX submarines is still a significant cause of concern for many. The military's decision to buy fewer Seawolves than originally planned was taken in large part because of how expensive they are. The final selling prices for Connecticut and Seawolf were about $6 billion, and that was four years ago. Today, they're well over that. Together with the somewhat more expensive Jimmy Carter, these attack submarines are the most expensive ever built. What do you think about this developing technology? Do you think it's worth the cost? Let us know down in the comments and be sure to subscribe. 3. Robotic Combat Vehicles After years of testing, the US Army is getting ready to deploy a family of uncrewed combat vehicles in order to increase the firepower of infantry and armored brigade combat teams. They will be used not only to shoot at the enemy, but to lay smokescreens in front of friendly troops, jab unfriendly communications, and other similar dangerous tasks. It saves soldiers from being put in harm's way. The robotic combat vehicles, or robot tanks, will be operated mainly by the army and will come in three different size classes. Each one will serve on a separate level of lethality and will range from light, medium, and heavy. With a maximum length of 18 feet, the smallest of the RCVs will weigh less than 10 tons. It'll be known as the RBC Light and be equipped with a Javelin anti-tank missile launcher. Its weapon is light but extremely potent. Helicopter transportation for RCVL is also intended. The Army anticipates losing RCVL during battle since they are attributable. The middle sibling of the three is called RCV Medium RCVM. Due to its somewhat greater length and width compared to the RCVM, the RCVM will be flown in a C-130J Super Hercules. To contain armor, more powerful guns, and a track-laying system similar to tanks, it weighs close to 20 tons. Unlike the RCVM, the Army doesn't expect or want to lose the RCVM in combat at all. They're bigger, a lot more expensive, and much more sophisticated. It'll come with 30 to 40 mm medium cannons or multiple anti-tank guided missiles for added protection. Lastly, the main battle tank will have no crew whatsoever. The robotic combat vehicle heavy RCVH is significantly heavier than the other two. It'll be so big 
that a C-17 Globemaster III long-range transport can only hold two of them. The Army refers to the RCVH as a non-expendable system, and it's also the most expensive of them all. With its large caliber direct fire gun, RCVH will be able to defeat threat tanks like the Russian T-14 Armata main battle tanks and the Chinese Type 99, as well as all Tier 1 threats. Ground-based vehicles must take a precise path around difficult terrain in advance or push through, whereas air and sea-based vehicles can fly or glide past obstructions. Ground vehicles must also navigate a variety of different kinds of terrain, including rivers, steep hillsides, dense woods, and desert sands. Soldiers want the robots to perform a number of tasks, not all of which require weapons. In any case, the RCVs will be armed. According to feedback from actual soldiers, the RCVs should be able to build smoke screens, fire down drones, handle radiological, biological, chemical, and nuclear threats, find minefields, and even label them. 2. The Army's Big Ten and AI of the Future The Bradley Infantry Vehicle the Abrams tank, the Apache attack helicopter, the Black Hawk helicopter, and the Patriot missile made up what the US Army calls the Big Five, which first became popularized in the 1980s. In many ways, all five have endured the test of time, and it's reasonable to say that they defined an era in modern warfare. Each of these platforms has undergone many changes. From the way they were when they first debuted to what they are now, with new guns, sensors, networking, and computer systems, they're almost completely new machines. According to the Army, only so many upgrades can be added to the Big Five, and there are limits to what can be done to the legacy system regardless of how much success it has. In order to create new platforms, which they refer to as the Big Ten, the Army is currently fully involved in a grand operation. To put it simply, a brand new age of warfare is peeking up over the horizon. Electronic warfare, hypersonic weapons that can go through space, precision weapons, data processing powered by artificial intelligence, and borderless, untraceable cyber attacks have and continue to transform modern combat in ways we never imagined. As a result, the Pentagon is currently engaged in a substantial modernization program involving initiatives to identify the greatest and most significant advancements in combat. It is anticipated that future wars will require a much different approach than conflicts of the past. Army futurists envision the future of modern warfare as being a lot more information-driven, AI-enabled, drone-heavy, and more dispersed or disaggregated. A multi-domain warfare environment to encompass more recently advancing domains like outer space and cyberspace is expected by the Army, above everything else. The platforms that will be included in the Big Ten are the robotic combat vehicle, optionally manned fighting vehicle, long-range hypersonic weapon, precision strike missile, expanded range cannon artillery, future tactical unmanned aerial system, attack reconnaissance aircraft, future long-range assault, network, and, of course, artificial intelligence. In essence, AI and networks are interconnected with everything and provide the frameworks for contemporary ideas of combined arms. These platforms will all be networked, and they're all going to have cutting-edge computer algorithms to account for new sensors, guidance technology, firing control, cyber resilience, manned-unmanned teaming, new weapons, and much more. Warfare has changed in quality over time thanks to human evolution, technological improvements, and overall human progress. AI is transforming warfare by giving weapons their own autonomy. In this perspective, perception, cognition, and action are the three big components. The outcome is the third, whereas perception and cognition are a series of instructions and algorithms. A weapon system that's able to function autonomously means that it doesn't need supervision or approval in order to perform its functions. The military's use of artificial intelligence focuses on cyber-attacking software, autonomous vehicles, and data crunching. Autonomy ranges in degrees, from low to high. 
Landmines would be considered low-level weapons, as opposed to fire-and-forget missiles which are semi-autonomous weapons. The Israeli Army and the United States Navy both possess weaponry that's capable of independently detecting, tracking, and firing at incoming missiles using pre-programmed tech. This acts as a good example of a weapon with a high level of autonomy. Unmapped aerial vehicles UAVs, also have navigational autonomy. The coordinates entered into them determine how they behave. Everything else about their actions is programmed. The current generation of military systems will be significantly more autonomous thanks to advanced artificial intelligence and the ability of machines to learn. Take killer robots as an example. They'll be able to roam about freely, recognize targets all on their own, and decide whether to shoot and kill the target. They won't need help from humans and will be able to carry out complicated tasks by themselves. They'll also engage in combat on battlefields in future wars, either with human soldiers or in place of them. It's thought to be a lot safer than other forms of warfare. Critics argue that computer programs can misfire and cause casualties with friendly fire. It could be claimed that AI will undoubtedly defeat humans in any future war as a result of its superior advancement. In 2020, in five provoked dogfights against a US Air Force F-16 pilot, an AI program prevailed each and every time. Australian Air Force researchers and Boeing have developed an autonomous aircraft called the Loyal Wingman to support and protect their air warriors. In the world of automated vehicles, this airplane is seen as a game changer. Artificial intelligence is built into it and it's supposed to fly alongside manned combat aircraft, offering increased levels of observation, defense, and assistance in downing aircraft. It's expected to start operating somewhere between 2024 and 2025. Global competition is pressuring decision makers and military organizations to increase the use of AI in military operations. The three countries that matter most in this respect are the United States, the People's Republic of China, and Russia. In some parts of the US, research is being done on autonomous boats that are able to locate and track submarines halfway around the world. Similar to how Russia is developing underwater drones, China is investigating swarm intelligence capabilities. A mixture of hopefulness and anguish is felt among the leaders of states and tech giants in regard to the use of AI. The future of AI for everyone, not just Russia, comes with massive opportunities, but it may also come with just as many unpredictable dangers. Whoever leads the way in the AI realm will be the ruler of the world, according to Vladimir Putin, Russia's president. In this ever-changing world, a new arms race has already started with the development of AI. We're currently in the third revolution of warfare, and the creation and growth of killer robots have been regarded as seismic. It's comparable to when nuclear weapons and gunpowder were first discovered. The burden on people would be reduced since AI would be better at detecting threats. It would support active strategy development free from ego emotions, and selfishness. Using unmanned systems in conjunction with networking is a key driving force behind next-generation combined arms. Drones, AI-powered weapons and sensors, air-ground-sea integration, and new space combat dynamics will all play a significant role in the future of war. By 2040, military decision-making generated from AI is projected to include available space-based data in real time. One. F-15 EX fighter jets, the first of Boeing's brand new fourth generation plus F-15 EX fighters will be purchased by none other than the Pentagon. The new acquisition will cost the government about $1.1 billion for just eight of the new jets, with additional purchases set to follow in the next few years. The Air Force's decision to buy an improved model of an older fighter instead of a more recent stealth plane like the F-35 has raised quite a bit of controversy. Even learning that it would be receiving the F-15EX, much less 144 of them, astonished the Air Force. Over time, the beloved F-15C-D will be replaced by the F-15EX and later retired. Despite the F-15's mid-1970s debut, 
modern versions are more sophisticated than the ones originally delivered to the USAF in 1974. The Eagles of today are more advanced than any the Air Force flies, with stronger airframes, more efficient computers, and extensive flight control systems. An upgraded radar and other components that Eagles from other countries lack are new to the F-15EX. The new aircraft would have an electronic warfare and threat detection system called the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System EPORS, as well as a more powerful mission computer, new cockpit displays, and a digital backbone. There's a solid reason why foreign air forces still use the F-15s, even in countries lacking America's advanced technology. They've never lost a battle. The older aircraft is meant to support, not replace the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, so upgrading F-15s won't alter operational strategy either. In order to locate and engage targets, the F-35 enters enemy airspace using its advanced stealth and sensor equipment. To keep their radar stealth, F-35s have interior bays where they store their armaments. Contrarily, each F-15EX can transport about 30,000 pounds of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weaponry. According to F-35 maker Lockheed Martin, the maximum takeoff weight is 5,700 pounds. The F-35 was nicknamed a battlefield quarterback by the US Air Force. The F-35 and F-15 will work together as a team. As soon as the F-35 spots the enemy coming, the F-15 will already be well on its way to take them down. Thanks for watching. Which of these weapons are you most excited to see? Let us know more in the comments and subscribe to see more videos.